Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room once again. Today I'm going to be walking you all through how I made my 1920s silk slip to wear underneath the navy lace dress that I showed you all how I made last week. So for those of you who caught that video, I'll put a card up to it here now. Of course, I needed a slip to wear underneath such an open lace dress, something to add a little bit more opacity, opacity, however you say that word, because otherwise it would be quite an immodest situation. So I wanted to make a slip to go underneath. I needed a navy blue slip anyway in my wardrobe, although this one is quite 20s styled, so it won't really work for things past that, but whatever. We'll make another slip in the future and out of a better fabric because you'll see me struggling with this one today. But before I get into it over here, let's jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom and get started. Okay, here we are. So last week I showed you how I made the 1920s lace dress, but of course that's quite sheer, so I wanted to make a slip to go underneath that. And this is the slip I wanted to make to go underneath here. Um, I bought a nice, very lightweight silk to make this out of. I'm hoping that possibly I can uh, do the top half of this. Um, I can self-line it because the silk is a tiny bit sheer still. So for a completely opaque top half of this, um, I would like to do this in two layers and then I won't have to finish this in any particular way either. I don't want to lose the nice sheer quality entirely of this garment. So I will be making this skirt a little bit shorter than the lace dress that way there's a little bit of full sheerness at the bottom and of course the side pieces here will have a lot more volume in this lace dress than I'm going to put into the slip. I'm going to keep this quite col column mm, columnar. I can't say this word columnar. Listen column like um, and um, the whole thing's going to be rather straight up and down very 20s in general. Uh, I'm just going to do little um, tubes of fabric and press them down to do the straps on this. And I'm just gonna draft this whole slip from the pattern I made for this one. So if you haven't seen me make the pattern uh, for this, go ahead and check that out. It'll be in a card here. And then of course, just on my uploads page on the channel in general. Um, so I'll be using this pattern to make this one. So um, perhaps watch this video first. If not, basically this is all based off the bust measurement for those who are new here and based off of the one hour dress kind of principles. I have a one hour dress video here on the channel as well. It's just very, very long as we know. Um, so perhaps stick with going to this one first and then come over here. So I've gone ahead and taken a piece of alphanumeric paper here and I'm just gonna go ahead and trace the 1920s dress pattern or sleeveless dress pattern here. So I've traced a copy of the back and then I will start drawing on there obviously. And I traced a copy of the front, including the dart and everything on here. Um, so I just traced a copy of those onto alphanumeric paper. And then I was, you know, hoping that you know, the only difference here is really the neckline that I could use the pattern almost identically, just changing the neckline here. So all I've done is from where the arm, like armhole, the bottom of that is, I've just come basically straight across. As you can see, if you look at this line, this line of zeros is straight. So I've come up, you know, a little bit, like maybe a quarter, half an inch from here. And I just curve that into this armhole here and just come up in the center. I do want and you can see the original v-neck here. I do want a bit of the slip to show uh, underneath the neckline like this. So it's nice to see just how much little v will show here in the front um, because I'm tracing right on top of this pattern to create the slip that will go underneath. So I put this little line here. That's all I changed on the front. Um, on the back, all I've done is I've kind of, if you see, imagine this is the original armhole here for the back of this 1920s dress pattern, I kind of just came up along that and then angled up and over. You could come straight across if you didn't mind having this, having quite a low back. I wanted a little bit more coverage in the back, so I just came up a little bit and again, straightened out to the center back line here, which is what this is. So uh, that was my initial, again, kind of what I wanted to try. So I went ahead and did that and I cut these out of my same taupey, sad lining fabric that I used to mock up this lace dress as well. Um, so I had a little bit more of that lining laying around and I used it to mock up these very simple modifications, basically just drawing in some necklines on the pattern from last week. And this is what that looks like. It's just the same exact piece with the bust starts like last time, just with a slightly curved neckline instead of coming up into a strap, of course. And then the back just kind of, you know, has this little bit of an angle here straight across the back. And the only thing I did was I cut it's probably one and a quarter inch strips of the fabric as well. And I pinned them here on the back and then I tried this on and kind of arranged the front so that the apex 
near the dart point sat where it was supposed to and then pinned the top straps and I pinned those so that they would cover my bra straps because I am planning to wear this bra underneath this outfit eventually I wanted these straps to cover my bra straps and like sit at the right height and so that's all I did to find those I just cut long pieces long strips and I pinned them where it gets straight here in the back I pinned them like right here is where these are pinned on the back of this and you can see it's pinned at a slight angle out. The angle will vary based on the angle of your shoulder. So um, I started out by pinning it straight and then noticed it was doing a little bit of a pucker here. And so I changed the angle and tried it on again um, with mock-ups and muslins and stuff like that. It's always a little bit of trial and error. So that's how I got this angle on here. The only other change I have made, I made while having this on, I guess, is that I did go ahead and pinch out about an inch of fullness from the very top of the back like a neckline kind of if you can call it a back neckline with this low on the back um and i'm just going to go ahead and take an inch from here and ease it all the way along down to here so i will draw a line like this um and then i will put this on the fold just to take out a little bit of fullness from this back bodice area just to make everything sit a little bit nicer that's just a fix i noticed i needed it might not look nice on like an outer garment but for a slip i don't really care if it's where it's flared and where it's not, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But you know, super, super simple. I mean, goodness, all I've done for the bodice, all I've done to the bodice from last time, the sleeveless 1920s dress bodice I showed you was just draw on new necklines. So, you know, that's about as easy as it gets guys. Um, and then, you know, of course, make a mock-up, try it on, pin your straps, alas. Now for the skirt here, I am going to, uh, originally I was gonna cut it like I cut my one hour skirts where I just cut it all in one piece and then I add a little bit of flare along the hip and then I do a box pleat here. If you've seen my one hour dress video, you know what I'm talking about. But I think because I want to try and self line the bodice of this slip, I'm going to cut the skirt separately and sew it on and I'm going to just cut the skirt in one layer. Of course I forgot to mention that because I'll be using these uh, hopefully, to line um, themselves. I do need to add seam allowance along the neckline that I drew in because I liked that neckline on my mock-up and I liked where it laid. I liked the height of it. So in order to maintain that height, I need to add on seam allowance if I plan on sewing this to itself. You know what I'm saying? Or sewing this with a facing or sewing this with anything but a binding, a bi like a binding edge. I was going to need to add some seam allowance. So I added seam allowance on this front neckline and seam allowance along this back neckline um, before I completely forgot to mention that, of course. So now I can go ahead and cut these out. I'll show you them when they're cut out too. Okay, so we have the bodices for this now, the front and back, but the skirt portion basically is just a rectangle. Um, the size of the rectangle, I have just gone ahead. This width of this, you know, this is half the front. This would be the other half. This is cut on the fold here. Um, the width of this is half of 22 and a half. So 11 point whatever. So I just made this 11 point whatever, plus the three and a half inch extension I've just added on here that will be sewn together at the side seam, but then also I will box pleat that. So eventually the garment will hang here, like you see here, but it'll just have a box pleat over my hips area so it can flare as needed. Again, this will not be seen. It will be worn underneath um, my skirt. I made 25 inches long on the dress. And so this one is cut. Right now at 23, it'll be even shorter, of course, when it's hemmed, I assume, by about an inch and a half. So that will allow the difference between the hem of the dress and the slip. I couldn't find the word slip. Goodness, this is what I get for sewing late at night, you guys. We'll see if I make any other mistakes. It could be real fun. But uh, this is like the top and the skirt here. Just so you can see this again, it's just a rectangle for the skirt. You could gather the sides into if you want. You could gather it in different ways. You could pleat that. If you want, whatever you want to do with the fullness, you can do it. Um, I just wanted to make it like I make my 1920s one hour dresses because, you know, it seems to make sense to me. Okay, I did not indeed have enough uh, fabric to be able to cut the bodice sections of this twice. So I did just cut them in one. And by uh, to do that, I just taped the skirt pattern back onto the bodice pattern and I just overlapped the seam allowance there because of course I don't need any seam allowance between the two anymore because it's all one piece. Um, so I had to cut these out 
in one piece here along the fold, of course. Um, I did the same for the back. I went ahead and just copied the skirt pattern and taped that onto the back pattern. Um, so I had to cut these in one without a seam here just because I didn't have enough fabric for that original plan, which also meant I needed to eke out a little bit of bias, um, like strips of bias from the extra fabric that I did have so that I could make a bias binding to either bind the inside of this edge or bind it entirely. I think I'll put the bias binding as like a facing on the inside so you don't really see it. You'll see some hand stitching, but only because this fabric is so delicate silk, you know? Uh, what are you gonna do? And you know, this is the kind of fabric where it, if you breathe on it wrong, <laughs> scary things happen. It's a very lightweight silk. It's called the China Silk from uh, Mood. Goodness, am I awake? It's hard to tell sometimes. And I swear I'm just hibernating because it's spring or winter, nearly spring. But um, yeah, so I had to cut some bias strips to finish that inside, but and I had to cut everything in one, but here we are. We're making it work, we're making it work here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the silk off of this pattern now, and I will mark my darts with a colored pencil as best I can on this silk, ah! And then I will sew my darts on these front pieces and then figure out how I want to sew the fronts to the backs. All right, here I am marking my darts on the front of this slip piece here. And I am just using colored pencil for that. You can get chalk pencils. Um, my tailor's chalk was being annoying and wasn't working for this. So I just went ahead and did it with colored pencil. Again, this is a slip and it will be inside and no one will ever know except for you and I. And here I am just going ahead and marking the dart on the other side here. I had to find my awl so I could poke holes in my pattern. I don't know how I managed to do the other side without them, but you know, I don't remember. <laughs> Just using my ruler to line up the points of the dart and then connecting those lines. And then I can go ahead and line them up, pin those darts, and then set them next to my machine. You can see this fabric is just tissue thin, flowy silk here. Um, I immediately, as soon as I started working with this, realized that I had made a mistake in getting this one. Um, I think Mood does recommend it for linings and things like lingerie, which technically a slip is lingerie, but I mainly chose this silk because it was $10 cheaper a yard than a nicer one, and um, I shouldn't have cheap, cheaped out. Um, this silk here is $14 a yard. I should have gone for the $24 or $28 like crepe back satin or something else that would have more substance, uh, substantial weave to it, because this is so lightweight. Here I am just sewing my dart. Yes, I did switch to a needle for sheer or finer fabrics, um, and I did play with the tension on my machine, but I didn't get it quite perfect because this machine, he's kind of, you know, struggling anyway. So I, I understood. And then here I am just sewing some little strips into tubes. These are just cut on the straight grain. Actually, you can use bias to make the straps as well, but these are just little tubes that I'm making for the straps on this slip. But I'm just sewing those with a half inch seam allowance. I think I cut these at about three inches wide to start with so that they would finish about an inch wide because you lose a half inch from each side, you know. You see what I'm saying. So I just went ahead and sewed those. Again, you do see me sewing over my pins here, especially because I'm using fine glass headed pins here. Um, they really never give me any problems. I know that technically you're not supposed to sew over your pins and it's true, um, you're not supposed to, but you know, I do a lot of things perhaps that I'm not supposed to. And um, no one's ever, you know, arrested me or anything. No, no fashion police have ever come by. So I continue in my terrible, evil ways. So here I am just sewing strips of bias together to iron into a bias tape to finish the neckline of this slip as well. Um, I'm actually tying off the ends of this often instead of backstitching just because this fabric is so fine and I didn't want to have to deal with backstitching it as well. All right, here I am going to go ahead and iron that bias tape I just made. So these are just strips of bias two inches wide, and then I just sew them together on an angle like this, and make sure that I'm not stretching the bias too much, because this is very stretchy with this silk fabric, and then I just pinch it into a double fold bias tape, essentially. If you bought, ever have bought double fold bias tape, the cotton kind that they have at Joann's, basically I'm making that myself out of my fabric so that it matches exactly in texture and color and all that jazz, of course. So I'm just making sure it's not stretching too much as I do this, and just using my iron to press this into a double fold. 
bias tape here. And I will just wind that out of my way for now until I'm ready to finish the neckline on this. Set that aside. And then here are my little strips for the straps that are cut actually on the straight grain. So I'm just ironing those. I'm just going to turn those right side out. And then for some reason I just press this with a seam down the center back of the um, strap. I don't know. I just felt like that might be a little bit uh, distributing the weight of the slip in a better way. I don't know why I decided to do this, honestly. I can't really explain my reasoning. Again, it was late at night and uh, I was rushing to get all my projects done for that Ravenclaw video before I had to film that Ravenclaw video, of course. And like usual, I have overscheduled myself and forgotten that life, you know, takes more time than you would think it, everything takes more time than you think it does. And so um, I was slightly delirious at this point. So who, who can say my reasoning sometimes? It's interesting doing these videos because it's like half a tutorial. I am trying to teach you how I do things, but at the same time, it is also just a sewing diary. So you get my, sometimes I cut corners, sometimes I sew over pins, sometimes I make, I make mistakes. So it's half sewing diary, half tutorial here. Mainly what I want to convey on my channel, channel in general is that like it can be done. You can make a retro, a vintage style wardrobe yourself. And I wish to convey that both by teaching you specific things and just showing you how I do it. Hopefully that makes some sense. Maybe I'm delirious again today. All right, here I'm just pressing this and I'm gonna go ahead and bind the raw side seams all along the bodice and the skirts here in rayon seam binding, of course. So here I have ironed rayon seam binding in half and I'm just cupping the edge of the fabric inside here. I'm just gonna pin a little bit of a start up here and then I will hold as I go, as I sew here, I've pinned the start. You may have seen in my last video that I did go ahead and pin all the edges of the rayon seam binding onto the edges I was sewing them to, but that was because I was working with that lace last time and I couldn't do it this way. This way it's just as you go, you lay the uh, raw edge inside the little fold of the rayon seam binding. And as you go, just hold it in place. It's much easier than having to pin the whole thing um, when you have a fabric that's like this and will behave in this way. Here I've just reached the little corner, so I'm just going to leave the needle down and turn my presser foot to sew this over that little corner. Turn the machine, again just leaving the needle down where I need to, to come around this corner. And then I will come around the other corner in a similar fashion, leaving the needle down and just opening up that bias tape again to encompass the raw edge, not bias tape. Ugh, I keep saying bias, I mean rayon seam binding. Honestly. <laughs> so I'm just laying that raw edge inside the little fold created by the round seam binding being ironed in half. Just encompass that raw edge so we don't have any more raw edges, basically. You could also use French seams to sew something like this, and often lingerie, especially lightweight silk things, are sewn with French seams. I just prefer to use round seam binding personally, and so that's what I did for this project. So then I went ahead and just backstitched and sewed off the edge and trimmed that. Here I am just giving that a little bit of a press. You can see my tension for this fabric is not perfect, but there was no getting it perfect, sadly. This fabric is just too thin. I should have sprang for nicer silk, but I was apparently feeling cheap that day. It's hard for me to spend a lot of money on something like a slip where it will never be seen. I just feel like, but I could have bought fun outside fabric. Here I am, after having done all the side seams that same way, I am laying the front on top of the back here, or the back on top of the front. Who, who knows? They look nearly identical. There's a dart in one of them. But I'm just putting right sides together here, and of course, pinning them along. I'm going to go ahead and sew, sew the side seams of the bodice area, and then sew the side seams of the skirt area, leaving this little um, extension unsewn or open, basically. And you'll see why in a moment just like I do on my 20s one hour dresses. If you've seen my video on those, you know how I box pleat the sides of my 20s things usually. So I'm just gonna come over here onto the machine and sew that. Again, just using my normal half inch seam allowance and sewing along over those fine pins. And I do sew down another half inch 
at the end here and you will again see why when I do my box pleat and then I will sew the side seams of the skirt here. I would say that this slip is not my best primo work here but that is because I was rushing a little bit. It's best to not be in a rushing sort of situation when it comes to sewing. Um, things you learn in fashion school as well and if you ever try and watch Project Runway when they give them a very small time limit mistakes get made and same is true with me. So I brought that side seam over onto my ironing table here and I can go ahead and press this box pleat in place. I've ironed open the seams obviously that I just sewed over on the machine and I'm just figuring out how my box pleat here is going to go now that I have it all opened up and I will just put pins along the top here and sort of iron it in place or press it into place. I'm not doing any measuring or anything while I do this. I'm just doing it by feel and by eye. Um, again, it's not going to be judged for any competition and it will be worn underneath a dress that it will never be seen. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And that's the other thing too, is if you're striving for perfection, I mean, perfection is very hard to achieve. I'm not a couturier. I'm just a person who likes vintage fashion. So I try and replicate it as best I can without driving myself mad, basically. I'm just putting pins across the top here because I'm going to sew a straight line across this pleat to hold it down. So I'll take that over to the machine, slide that on, and just where I have that pleat pinned down, I will sew straight across to hold it into place. And this is, of course, all on the inside of the slip, but you can see all my seams will be finished. There's no raw edges going on which will be good when it comes to, like, say, washing this slip, which I would do, I'd probably hand wash this slip. However, I didn't pre-wash this fabric in that way, which you should do. If you intend to hand wash something, you should usually at least hand wash the fabric beforehand or wash and dry it that way. Any shrinkage that is going to happen will already happen. Of course, caring for silks is not as easy as caring for something like a cotton. I wonder what Mood recommends for this fabric. They might say dry clean only, sometimes they do but you can usually hand wash silks, even if it takes a little bit of steam and uh, nonsense to get them back. Here I am just pressing this from the outside so it looks a little bit nicer. Again, I have been warning you that I'm not the best at working with tissue paper crazy silk like this. It's strange that I should come across a fabric that makes me like really excited to work with rayon crepe. I'm like, oh my goodness, it's going to be so nice and easy to work with some rayon crepe after this. Here I am pinning the other side seam to do all of that again on this side as well. I did do those one at a time. It's funny, after this project, I had just finished working with that lace, and I was like, oh good, I'm done working with lace. Now I get to work with this slippery silk? Oh my gosh, how much better is that? Not really. <laughs> all right, here I am pinning on the bias tape we made earlier to the top neckline. So I'm pinning this on the right side, right sides together. All along the top of the neckline, I'm pinning this bias tape that I made. And that is because I will turn this onto the inside and that is how I'm going to finish my neckline. So I'm going to sew this with a half inch seam allowance along the top here. You could also use this to like just bind the top edge, but I'm going to turn the whole thing inside, which you will see when I get to that step, basically. So that's all pinned all around the edge there and I can take it over the machine. Go ahead and sew that on. And now this silk sometimes, you know, it wanted to move around in different funny ways. So on some sections of this, I do actually remove the pins as I go, like one is supposed to when sewing. And then sometimes I leave them on. So, you know, you're used to that. If you've been here on my channel before, you know me and pins and my machine. We all have an interesting relationship going on where we all agree to not cause any trouble. Okay, here I am just pressing that bias upward to start with, just pressing that seam so I can get a clean edge because I'm going to fold this onto the interior of my slip here. Remember this is the outside currently that we're looking at. Sorry it's so dark, the lighting from my window is not being consistent. Alright, so now I'm going to turn this bias that I've sewn onto the outside inside. So you can see it's about an inch wide here. Again, I didn't measure as I pressed this bias tape, I just did it by eye. But I am pinning it 
to the inside here so that the seam we just sewed, the seam we just sewed, <laughs> the bias between the bias and the slip itself is on along the top edge here. So I'm just folding this to the inside to encompass all the raw edges and finish off that top edge of the slip. I will go ahead and just give that a press as I go and I will actually hand stitch this down. Um, you could machine stitch it, but for something like this, I figured hand stitching would work better. Uh, in the end, I'm not sure if that's really true, <laughs> um, looking at the finished product. But again, I think most of my issues with this fabric were just me not having a ton of experience with this type of fabric. Um, I've never worked with something this tissuey before. And my goodness, does it make me miss nice, stable things. <laughs> Going around the underarm area here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and sit down at my desk and hand stitch this down, just sort of slip stitch, blind hemming stitching it down along that edge. Being careful with tension as I do that. Then I'm going to bring the slip back over onto my, it's like a basically a, a, a strapless slip at this point, bringing it back, back over onto the ironing table here and I'm just pressing in a half inch and then inch hem just double turning the hem of the skirt up again this is cut straight so it there's no trouble hemming this one but I'm just folding it up a half inch and then another inch again doing that by eye not even using a hem gauge I've hemmed a lot of skirts in my time so I just do them by eye I'm not again worried about precision very much anymore the time when I was graded on my sewing is over I had my apparel design degree days where I actually got judged on things. And funny enough, with all my shortcuts that you see me do here on the channel, I actually won best construction um, my senior year of college. And I guess that tells you, you know, if I won best construction and I kind of cut corners of my sewing, goodness knows what the inside of everyone else's garments look like. No shade. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to take my mock up and I'm going to mark on the paper pattern where I liked those straps to be. In all honesty, I probably am going to do the same method to put the straps onto this mock-up. I'll probably do that same method with the finished slip as well. So I'll probably attach them across the back um, using my markings that I'm going to transfer from the back here onto the back pattern piece. And I'll use that uh, as an indication to do the, them on the actual slip. But then for the front, I'll probably actually try the slip on and then pull the strap over and make sure it's in the right place, pin it where I want it, and then sew it down. So I'll probably use the same method that I used to find the strap placement on this. Instead of just trying to transfer this exact placement onto the pattern, I will just do the back. And then uh, for the fronts, I again will just try on the slip and pin them right where I want them. And then s pin those and then stitch them down. So I can just make sure that I have the exact right fit on the actual slip as well. So what I've done here is I just lined up my pattern. You remember I took this little bit off of this pattern. So this is lined up with the edge here. And I've just marked the angle and where I have this strap pinned that I ended up liking it. So um, you can see that that angle matches up here um, with how I have it pinned on to the mock-up. And then I will go ahead and pin the straps onto the actual slip using this pattern as a like guide, I will actually pin the backs, pin the fronts, and then once I have the position finalized is when I will go ahead and sew the straps down. All right, so here I am at the top of the slip. You can see how kind of puckered and sad <laughs> this guy is. Luckily, it's a slip and will be worn underneath things and will never really be seen, but sewing with fine, super fine silks like this is not something I have a ton of experience with. Um, and although I used like a finer needle, and I played with my tension a little bit. It just, it's not my area of expertise and uh, you, it shows <laughs> for sure. So uh, I think my mistake was in going for a less expensive silk as well, but we'll talk about that more later. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put my pattern on here. I'm lining up the seam allowance with the seam because of course this is now inside that seam there to find where I need to put this strap. I'm gonna put two pins in here and I will line the ends of my straps in here and pin them onto the back and then I will try this on and pin the fronts and once I'm happy with the placement of the straps and how long they are and all that and they're pinned where they need to be I will go ahead and st stitch them down. Go ahead and stitch them down. Oh my. So here are the backs of the straps pinned on. I just have the ends of these straps pinned closed for now by the way. 
Um, so I'm just going to pin these on and I will try this slip on and pin the fronts and confirm that everything is at the angle and length and area it needs to be before I go ahead and just stitch these down. Um, I will just go ahead and stitch them along this edge with like a slip stitch probably and then slitch, stitch it more securely on the inside here. Um, and then this slip will be done and thank goodness because I chose the wrong fabric you guys. <laughs> I didn't know, you know? Ooh. Okay, my camera does not like this dark fabric. I have my straps all pinned where I like them to be. I'm going to go ahead and stitch them to this slip now. Um, I'm just going to do some probably uh, very MacGyvered kind of hand stitching to get these on here. Um, I probably won't film it. I'm sorry. Just imagine I sewed them on with magic, okay? Because this fabric and I, I I'm going to do it kind of quick because I'm ready to be done <laughs> with this project. Please forgive me. Here is the finished 1920s slip. Of course, it's never meant to be worn just like this, and goodness, it's not very flattering all on its own, uh, but that's the 20s for you. It's just sort of a tube of fabric. It's not really, you know, uh, good for us hourglass figures, but uh, <laughs> here it is with the dress on top of it in its intended, you know, end state. Uh, this slip is never meant to be worn without a dress on top of it. And luckily I do have a couple of 1920s dresses that are in navy or require a navy slip. So this will come in handy in my closet now because I only had a purple, for whatever reason, 1920s style slip in my closet. And it was a polyester situation anyway. So it'll be good to have this really dark navy blue one to wear underneath this lace dress and also some other navy uh, dresses that I have in my closet. So this is going to be quite useful for me, even though I didn't have the most fun making it. In any case, I hope this video was helpful for those of you out there who are hoping to make a 1920s slip or something similar to this kind of thing. Um, I definitely need to make a black 1920s slip in the future and I will be using a more substantial, probably like a crepe back satin or something like that in the future when I do that again because <sighs> just floaty silks, you know, it's a, they're a beast of their own, really. Thank you all as always for tuning in today and I'll see you again soon. Bye.